Welcome to my IA 210 Let's Play of The Legend of Zelda A Link to the Past. A Link to the Past is an RPG adventure and the third game in the Legend of Zelda series, produced by Shigeru Miyamoto and developed by Nintendo EAD, Entertainment and Development. It was released on November 21st, 1991 for the fourth generation console of the Super Nintendo Entertainment System, or SNES. The game takes place in the land of Hyrule, and the protagonist of this adventure, often named Link, is the chosen hero of Hyrule who must set out to save Princess Zelda from the wizard Aghanim. He needs three pendants, one of courage, wisdom, and power, to unlock a master sword and stop Aghanim. Unfortunately, Link is too late, and Aghanim uses seven maidens to unlock the power of the Triforce and turn Hyrule into a land of dark and light, ultimately bringing back the Dark King Ganon. Link must free the seven maidens to reach Ganon, defeat him, and take back the Triforce and turn the world back to light. Due to hardware limitations of the time, more background of the story, Ganon, the Triforce, and Hyrule, and an introduction are given in the game's then-included instruction manual. Using Lindsay Grace's game types to classify A Link to the Past would see it set as an RPG adventure. The player is able to choose the name of the protagonist and is allowed to explore as they see fit. The backstory in the instruction manual is also written in a way to immerse the player in the role of Link. The player can also talk to residents of Hyrule and connect with them to help drive the player to beat the game. The dungeons also employ strategy, as each one is a puzzle. Mental skills, like logical thinking and memory, are the only skills needed to solve these puzzles and remember locations of important spots throughout the world. Link's quest to gain the Master Sword and save the Seven Maidens from the evil of Ganon leaves the game without much agency, as the player must complete the temples in order to move on. However, this can be circumvented by gaining the special item of the temple. What the game lacks in agency is made up in the player's ability to explore the map. The map is large and filled with hidden treasures and even features two different versions, the Dark World and the Light World, that give you even more areas to explore and players can switch between the two to strategically gain new items. Using Bartlett's taxonomy, this would appeal to explorers. The game would also appeal to achievers, as collecting all the items in the game is not required to beat it, but collecting these items makes it easier to get through the game and also makes Link more powerful. The player can collect heart containers, an ice rod, and even reduce their magic usage by half. Both these things fall under the gamer motivation model of achievement for power and completion. A Link to the Past is accessible to both hardcore and casual gamers. The game can be played in short pieces, such as completing one dungeon and then stopping. It is also not necessary to know the background of the games or pay attention to the story to enjoy it. Hardcore gamers can also find enjoyment in exploring the map and investing more time. There's also a network of fans for The Legend of Zelda for them to interact with. A Link to the Past's operational actions include using the sword picking up and throwing things, walking, swimming, running, pushing and pulling, and the actions that each of the equipable items are capable of. Some of the resultant actions you can perform are picking up and throwing a pot at an enemy, leaving a bomb and picking it up and throwing it, swinging the sword while moving to continue hitting enemies. The game also has a set of objects that includes Link's sprite, the health hearts, 
the magic bar, the item box in the top right corner, rupees, the number of arrows and bombs, all the items on the item screen, and much more. Some of the items that have dynamic attributes are the bow, which you can turn into the silver bow, the sword, which you can level up to level 4, and bottles, as they can be filled and each fairy or potion represents a new state. Most of the other usable items are static. A Link to the Past benefits from the SNES's increased capabilities, which allow for more affordances. The health bar is clearly indicated by the row of hearts at the top of the screen, and people are more easily able to associate the two. Building on this, it is clear that the larger shape of heart containers and their pieces are used to increase the maximum capacity, and that the smaller hearts that appear when you defeat enemies are there to restore health. These affordances also made it easier for the players to find secrets in the world. This game is an exemplary model of its genre because, for its time, it contains a large overworld without significant loading screens, making it a more seamless experience. It also didn't break up the action of the game with battle transitions, which games such as Chrono Trigger did. Instead, the enemies are preloaded onto the screen and the player can interact with them in real time. The improved graphics also made it easier and more enjoyable to play than the original Legend of Zelda. Classifying A Link to the Past under Hunnic, LeBlanc, and Zubik's eight types of fun would make it fantasy. The game aims to make you feel like you are a Link. Challenge as the game requires strategy to complete dungeons and beat bosses. Discovery, since there's a large map. And narrative, as the game's backstory and the people in the world can get you invested in saving it. Since A Link to the Past was released in 1991, Nintendo used the generic idea of creating some dope-ass commercials to excite consumers and convince them to buy the product. This led to the game being a beloved part of the franchise and prompted multiple re-releases for the game. Nintendo ported it to the Game Boy Advance in 2006, and also put it on the Wii, Wii U, and 3DS Virtual Console stores.